Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome once more to the Transforming Woman. It's another blessed Monday for us to receive the word of God, and I pray you'll be blessed this morning as well as I know I'll be blessed. Let us start with a little word of prayer. Thank you, ever-living God. Thank you, Father, for the blessing of this new day. Thank you for your word that you have sent for us this morning. Thank you because we know the Lord is going to resonate within us and it's going to fill us up. It's going to cleanse us from every impurity, so Father. And so we say thank you, Father, because you thought of us. It's not because we are worthy, but because you have chosen us. And so we reference you this morning and acknowledge you as God over our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes. My soul says yes, says yes to your will. I have confidence in you. Jesus, I have confidence in you. Savior, I have confidence in you. Every day, every night, I have confidence in you. Jesus, I have confidence in you. Jesus, I have confidence in you. Savior, I have confidence in you. Every day and every night. I have confidence in you, Jesus, I have confidence in you, Savior, I have confidence in you, Jesus, I have confidence in you. Jesus, I have confidence in you. Savior, I have confidence in you. Every day and every night, I have confidence in you. Jesus, we have confidence in you. Savior, we have confidence in you. Jesus, my soul says yes, says yes, my soul says yes. Says yes to your will. My soul says yes. Says yes. Says yes. My soul says yes. Says yes to your will. Where you lead me, I will follow. When you call me, I will answer, oh my God, please teach me how to know your way. When you lead me, I will follow, and when you call me, I will answer, oh my God, please lay your hands upon my head. So be my light, be my guide, be my way, be my will. 
So be my light, be my guide, be my way, be my will. Oh, my Lord, let your will be done in me. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes. My soul says yes, says yes to your will. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes. My soul says yes, says yes. To your will, wherever you go, wherever you are, one moment you choose, whatever your plans, oh my Lord, let your will be done in me. So be my life. Be my guide, be my way, be my will. Oh, my Lord, let your will be done in me. So be my light, be my guide, be my way. Be my will, oh my Lord, please lay your hands upon my head. Let your will be done in my life, Daddy, let your will be done in my life. Father, let your will be done in my life. Let your will be done in a life. Let your will be done in a life. Let your will be done in a life. Father, let your will be done in a light. Let your will be done in a light. That is why you are called Jehovah. That is why you are called. Jehovah, what you say you will do, that is what you do, that is why you are called Jehovah, we we'll lean on you, Jesus, we we'll lean on you. We lean on you, Jesus, we lean on you. We lean on you, Jesus, we lean on you. We lean on you, Jesus, we lean on you. We lean on you, Jesus. Jesus. We lean on you. We lean on you, Jesus. We lean on you. We depend on you, 
Jesus, we depend on you. We depend on you, Jesus. We depend on you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just want to welcome everybody. If you're joining us for the very first time, this is the Transforming Woman. So I just want to thank those who are following us on Facebook and thank my fellow sisters on the Zoom platform. I am grateful. Thank you for joining us today. You know, there are some days I try hard not to be on camera, but I guess maybe just for some few, one minute or two minutes, I'm, I'm in, how can I put it? I'm I don't want to put the word force, but I just have to be there just for this purpose. Hallelujah. So we are live on Facebook. Please, for those of us who are on Zoom, the link has been sent on the WhatsApp group. Just go ahead and share. Just go ahead and share. And I'll be out of your faces for the next 30 seconds. So as I said, this is the Transforming Woman. In short, it's called TTW. And the scripture for this mandate is 2 Corinthians chapter 2, um, chapter 3, verse 18, which says, But we all with unveiled faces, beholding us in the mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. What is CTW all about? This is a place where women gather, regardless of their age, their status, or their denomination, for fellowship to behold the face of our master, Jesus Christ. And in the course of that, they evaluate themselves daily, not for condemnation, but for spiritual good. It is a place where women are trained to thrive, understand times, season and stand a gap in the place of prayer for themselves their family and the nations or their nations we use the word woman as per the title of the gathering instead of women because it is a personalized decision to be made by every woman depending on how hungry she is in need of the master's help we gather for now every monday to worship share the word of God, and pray our way into our pre-designed destinies. It is a gathering of total surrender and a place where we have only one objective and no alternative, which is either Jesus or Jesus. Our mission is to gather to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and evaluate our lives daily for spiritual good. Our vision is to raise a generation of women who are passionate for God. They are conscious of their life in the secret. They are ready to fulfill purpose, enjoy marriage, and promote godly parenting. Our values are love, humility, compassion, giving, excellent self-control and sacrifice. That said, I'm not the one who is privileged to share the word today. Our sister Diane will be leading us for the message of today. I'm so ready. I have a book and a pen ready for that. And I know that we are going to be blessed. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are all welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Just pardon me if my voice sounds different or if I have to clear my throat from time to time because I have a, 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 a call. So, and I just want to thank God for everyone that is here today. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you. Heavenly Father, we say thank you for a moment like this that you have brought us all together, Father, to come and share from your beautiful word, oh Lord, Father, the word of, trans word of transformation. Lord, we ask that today you speak to us, oh Lord, Father, for those things that sometimes we don't see a reason or why we should do those things or why should we live the kind of life that you ask us to live, Father, we ask that today you speak to us, no matter how that tiny that thing is, Father, it could be a life-changing thing, Father, speak to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I commit myself to you, for in Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen. Okay, so I am going to use a scripture. My first scripture that I am going to take is uh, in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 17, chapter 17, verse, um, I'm going to start from verse, uh, from, from verse 13. And this is the story of Jesus with the lepers. And he said, and they lift up, they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And they, and when they saw, when he saw them, 
he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it come to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15 say, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorified God and fell down on his face at the feet, at, the, at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a, a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, say, where were there not 10 cleans, but where are the nine? Jesus Christ is asking, were there not 10 cleans? Where are the nine? My title today for my message is gratitude. Gratitude. I know a lot of people will be like, why should I live a life of gratitude? After all, you know, I'm serving God. After all, I'm a worker in the house of God. So everything that God has done to me or everything that God has given me or is going to give me is based on my service to God. Gratitude. Some people will be like, why should I always say thank you? Gratitude. Some people will be like, well, I have said thank you once. Do I have to say it again? Gratitude. And some people, it's not just even the way they say thank you, but the purpose or the intention behind the thank you. That's what matters. So I just wrote down a short uh, definition or explanation about gratitude. This is something that I found online. And it said gratitude unlock the fullness of life, it turns, it turns what we have into enough or more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger, into a friend, gratitude bring peace for today and create a vision for tomorrow. Gratitude is an action. So why I wrote down this? Because it makes me understand Thanksgiving is different from gratitude. It's okay for people to say thank you or thank you for giving them a cup of water, for giving them a, uh, uh, you know, a meal, they say thank you. But what it makes me understand that gratitude is just more than saying thank you. And it says, I found another definition that where it says, thankful, thanksgiving is, is a, like an expression. It's just like an expression. And it's like a feeling. And it says feeling can fade away. So sometimes, People will say thank you, but that is the end of it. They move on with their life, you move on with your life. And then there is nothing also connecting you, but they already say thank you and you have taken the thank you, just like you are going into a store and you open a door to somebody. When somebody is coming and you're going out, you hold the door, you know, for them. When they get in or when they come close to you, they, when they come close to you, they will say thank you. But there's no strength attached. You don't even know those people. They already done what they have to do and they move on. But when you are talking about gratitude, gratitude is that deep feelings that even when God can look down on you, he opened your heart, you he will see that you are, truly grat you are truly grateful for that thing. And I was, I was looking at some scripture. I'm gonna be taking a lot of scripture. And I also found some other definitions. This one that say, say uh, gratitude is a quality of being thankful. Quality. So mark that quality of being thankful. Readiness to show appreciation. Appreciation. That deep, deep, great uh, gratefulness that comes from your heart. Appreciation for, 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 for things that you receive that you are not deserving of. Things that you receive that you are not deserving of. You don't deserve it, 
but this person did it. We don't deserve it, but God did it. God gave it to us. So for us, that appreciation that comes from within your heart, that even if somebody will ask you like, ah, why are you, why are you this exactly? Why do you keep, you know, saying, I thank God for this person. So a grateful people, whenever they're grateful, they're grateful for, even for something that somebody did for them through God, they always refer that thing with God. And that shows that a grateful person is a person that have a fear of God and love God. Because there's no way you can be grateful if you do not have that rooted love in your heart. Because there are some people for all their lives, they will be saying, oh, I'm so grateful for this person. I'm so grateful for God connecting me to this person. So you see, God come in place. No matter what that person represents in their life, they have that reference, they have that love, they have that knowing and appreciation that if not for God, God first before that person, that that person could not even could have come into their life. And why should we be grateful? Why should you be grateful? You should be grateful because when you know in the book of Acts 20, 24 say, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the works assigned, assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. So being, whenever you are gra gra grateful to God, whenever you are grateful for something, you are knowing that, okay, this life, this life that I live, yes, today I wake up, I bet myself, I dress myself, I put on my own makeup, that life is not my own. It's not my own. It does not belong to me. It was given to me. When you know that the life you live today is not your own, you don't even stand a chance to lift your leg up, you will be grateful. You will be grateful. You'll be so full of gratitude to God that today he has given you life. And also he said, because the life even that you are given is to do the work of him that made you. And what is that work? telling good news, telling, telling people about good news. And good news, good news is not just about you, you know, going to carry the Bible and preach. Whenever you are grateful to God, whenever you let people know, look, I am grateful for this. I am grateful for that. Anything you open, anytime you open your mouth to say, I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for that. That means you are telling the good news. There are so many ways you can preach to people without having to, you know, to carry Bible and open a scripture, your life, your reference to God, your gratitude to God already speaks. And people will look at you and say, ah, what does this person have? Why is this person this, this excited? Grateful people are excited about life. They are excited about life because why? They know the life they live does not belong to them. Even as they were given that life, they are Main, the main purpose is to tell about the good news of what God is doing in their life. So being grateful alone is, is a test, is, is a is a is a is a uh, evangelism. Is it is is a you are, is ministering, you are ministering to people whenever you are grateful to God or to somebody in your life because you know you don't know you do not deserve it, but God give it to you. And another scripture I take, just like I said, I'm going to be taking another scripture. I say, why should you be grateful? And first Corinthians, first Corinthians 4, first Corinthians 4, 7 say, what is so special about you? That is what the Bible is asking. What is so special about you? What is so special about me? What is so special about me that is not special about other people? What do you have that you were not given? What do you have? Look around you. What do you have that you are not given? And if it was given to you, how can you brag? How can you brag? What is so special? I want every one of us to ask ourselves that what is so special about me? What is so special about me? And what have I? that God has not given me. Oh, I do not get it through somebody. 
that God connected me with. And if everything, everything that we have is given to us by God or by somebody, why are we bragging? Why do we brag? Why do we brag that, oh, I have this house and that person is living in an apartment? Why do I brag, oh, I have dri I'm driving the most expensive car, but this person, you know, they are jumping from one bus to another, or they are calling people to come and give them ride. Why do I brag that I'm wearing the most expensive and clean clothes most other people are, are going to Goodwill to go and buy their own clothes? Why do I brag that I am the most beautiful? What makes me think that God is not the one that created that person that I'm looking at them, that they are ugly? What makes me think that God cannot still give that homeless person that I'm seeing under the bridge a mansion bigger than my own? Why do we brag? What do we have? And when you have that knowing that nothing, 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 who are you? You ask yourself, who am I? That today, if I just close my eyes, I, I, I sleep and God decided to call me home. Will I take those things? Will I take that house? Will they bury me in that house? No, they're only going to wrap you in white clothes. They're only going to wrap us in white clothes and put us in a wood and cover us. I know some uh, other part of Nigeria, like uh, the, uh, some of the Muslim people, they don't even make coffin like casket to bury people. No, they just wrap you on white sheet. They put you in one wood. When you get there, they remove you from the wood and put you on the ground and take their wood back. So what do we have? Who are we that we brag about our beauty? We brag about all kinds of unnecessary things, things that in the first place we don't even deserve. We should not even have it. Let me just uh, bring um, I bring this, you know, some people will look at themselves like, hey, when I came to this country, even people from this country, they would have heard people boast and brag and say, oh, I worked so hard. I worked so hard for this, for this position that I attained. I worked so hard. I went to school for it. I have a degree. And I have the bachelor's degree and I went and did my master's degree and I went and, be, uh, and, and become a, a, a doctor. I have a doctorate degree. So this position that I am, I deserve it because I work for it. <laughs> when I heard people say that or speak like that, it hurts and pain my heart because every day that I go to bed, I always take stock of myself at night. At night time is the time for me to do all the thinking about what went on, what is going on in my life. Before I fall asleep, sometimes it will take me about 30 minutes, an hour, just, you know, analyzing things. Analyzing things. Like how? Yes, there's a place for us to want to be better, but not a place for us to brag and think like, oh, if not for your education. Do you know how many people have doctorate degree? Do you know how many people have like five, six degrees? But some of them, they are janitors. They are cleaners somewhere. So you think that position is because of your education you attend to it only by the grace of God. Only God that give to you. Because why our father in heaven, he is a loving father, he's a good God. That is why the Bible made us understand that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's the love of God that he has for us that make us want to give us everything good that we deserve, we, we desire that we do not deserve it. We desire it, but we don't deserve it. God has given it to us. So that's another reason why you should that you should be grateful to God when you know that you are nothing, when you know that your life, that you are given, the, the things that you are given, you, it is, you do not deserve it, they're given to you. You should not brag. He said, no man shall brag in their own power. No man shall brag in their own power. And I say also again, why should we be grateful to God? And another scripture I found interesting is in Jeremiah 10, 22. He said, Lord, I know that people lives, and pe I mean, I know that people lives are not their own. 
it is not for them to direct their step. This is a scripture that is telling us, Lord, I know that our lives is not our own. Our life is not our own. And we should not be the one to direct our steps. Because if God should allow it and say, you lift one leg and put it wherever you choose to put it, if God do not direct you, you're not going to be able to do that. It's only God that can direct our steps. So we should not say, oh, it's because I know where to go. It's because I know where to go get things done. It's because I know where things are happening. That is why I find myself in that place. No, it's only by the direction of God that you can get to that place. You know how some people will be like, nothing happened for chance. Nothing happened by chance. Everything that happened, it is directed and ordered by the Lord. So, and that is why this scripture, Jeremiah 10, 23 say, Lord, I know, Lord, I know my life is not my own. So I should not be the one directing my steps. When I know that, then I will have every reason to be grateful to God, to lay down on the ground when I need to lay down to show, show my appreciation to God. When everybody is looking at, at dusting, at dusting the floor, when they are in the presence of God, they are, they are trying to dust, they're trying, oh, I wear white clothes. I don't, I don't, I don't want anything to dirty my clothes. You, when you know that, oh, this life does not belong to you. When you know that nothing you can do on your own, when you know that you cannot direct yourself, is by the grace of God that you were able to get to where you are. You will lay down whether you are wearing white clothes or whether that cloth cost you $1,000 a piece, you will lay down on the floor and say, God, I am thankful. And be grateful from your heart and pour out your heart to God. That is another reason why people, women of God, children of God should be grateful. Because I know this is not for the children of the world. They cannot understand. They cannot understand. And another scripture that I've taken that says, why should we be grateful? <clears throat> why should I be grateful? <clears throat> Excuse me. It's Deuteronomy 8, 17. I say, you might say to yourself, my power and my own strength, my ability have, have gained me this, have gained me this wealth, has, have gained me this wealth for me. He said, you will say, my strength, my ability, just like I say, some people think it's their degree that got them that job. Some people think, oh, it's because of, you know, they know somebody in the embassy. That's why they went to the embassy and they were able to get a visa and come here. Or some people would think, oh, they got that contract because they know some politician. No. He said, he will say, ha, 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 ha. It is my strength and the ability of my hand that giving me this. And what did the Bible say? That means you are a fool. If you are saying it's your abilities, you are saying it's your strength, if you are saying it's what you know how to do best, that giving you what you have today, then the Bible, God is telling you that you are a fool. God is telling us that we are fools. And that takes me to my next scripture. And that is Luke. 2 of 19, he said, then I will say to myself, this is a fool. If you people remember the, par the parable of, of this wealthy man, rich man, he said, then, if you read it from the beginning, but before you get to that, 19, he said, then I will say to myself, <clears throat> I will say to myself, to myself, so the, the fool now is talking to himself, that he will say to himself, that himself, you have many good good you, you have many good store up for men for for many years take it easy eat and drink and enjoy yourself so the fool now is telling himself that i will say to myself like me now <laughs> diane i'll just come and say oh diane you have done well for yourself. You have stored up so many goods. You have built this mansion. You have built this business. You have this money enough to last you for a lifetime. Just relax. Take it easy. Eat, drink, enjoy. Wear the kind of clothes you want to wear. You know, drive the kind of car you want to drive and just enjoy your life. 
But what did the Lord tell that fool? The Lord said to him in verse 20, but God said to him, you fool, this very night, your life is demanded of you. And the, 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 I, 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 as he said, your life is demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, who is, who will, will they be? The things that you prepare. The Lord himself, God himself told this man, he said, you fool today. Yes, you think you have this. You think you have that. You think it's your power. You think you work hard. You know how to do business. You have studies, you have studies. And the man, he said, he has forgotten about God. He's telling himself that he has done well for himself. Let him just rise and enjoy his wealth for the rest of his life. Let him eat, let him drink, let him wear where he wants to wear. He forgot about going back to say, God, thank you. He about, forgot about going back to say, God, I'm grateful. For, he forgot about saying, but God, I am grateful for this that you have given me. I just come back to say thank you. He has forgot about giving the poor. He has forgot about sowing to the church. He has forgot about sowing into people's life. All he's thinking is him, like his ability, his wealth, his power, his, his business, his sense of, of doing good business. Got him all these things. But God look at him from heaven. He said, you fool, today your life is demanded. The danger of not being great, great, gratitude, showing gratitude, the danger of showing no, not showing gratitude is dead. And God said, today I demand your soul. And all these things you have piled down, all these things that you have packed, you have stopped, who will they become of? Who will eat them? Who will, who will benefit from them? Vanity upon vanity. And that's what the Lord told the fool. So my sisters, when you think, when you start to get carried away by, 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 by the things that is going on around you, by the things that your friends have, or you don't have, or by the things that you have, your friends don't have, your, how you mock people, you telling people, oh, this, uh, this one, as ah, she's working, we don't even know that she has nothing to show off. You, you have something to show up, and God is telling you, you are a fool. Because nothing that you own was not given to you by God. What is it that we have that is not given to us? So when you know that today you can just lay down and that will be the last day. That will be the last day. You will even set your eyes on the, all those things you are bragging of. You will know that, no, this thing doesn't mean anything without God without being grateful to God, without being appreciative to God, nothing, this thing will be useless. This thing will be useless. And there's a danger, danger for an ungrateful person. There is a danger that can be for an ungrateful person. I was watching a, a, a video, a video clip like, uh, uh, a comedy, all this little, little comedy. And this woman <clears throat> adopted a child. She adopted a child. Well, not just really, maybe she adopted her when she's young or she, she adopted her when she's big. So whatever this girl, this woman is rich. Whatever this girl wants, she give it to her. This girl want Brazilian hair, 90,000 Naira. The woman will go and buy it and give it to her. This woman, this girl want this, this one get that. But even when this woman called on this girl, she called the girl, come and give me a cup of water. She said, ah, ah, mommy, I am tired. And remember, this is even adopted child. This is not a child that this woman gave birth to. It's a child that she adopted to show kindness to her, to love this girl, to give her home. And this girl will say, I'm tired, mommy. Why are you make being too dramatic? If you are hungry, you go to the kitchen is there. You go do this, you go do that. You know, the woman tried to show this girl love for where the girl will not even reciprocate. She will not be a even not, not just even for the, for the sake of respect, for the sake of respect, somebody that picked you up from nowhere, gave you a shelter, gave you a home, take you to be like their own daughter. Everything you want, you get it on a platter of gold. 
anything is done for you for the sake of respect, just for the sake of respect. Wouldn't you even say, ah, mommy, let me cook for you. Mommy, let me give you a cup of water. No, this girl will tell the woman that she wants to do that. Me, I've done my nails, so I don't want to spoil my nails. Mommy, if you want, if you want food, you go, you go into the kitchen and, and make it for you. So this woman keep trying to correct this girl, correct this girl, still continue to show this girl love. But this girl have maxed out her mercy. She have maxed out. She have gotten to the end of her mercy. You know what this woman, this rich woman, did? she called the poor girl's mom from one village. She said, come and take your daughter. I cannot keep her no more. The mother of the child came. She begged and begged and begged and begged and begged. The, mother, the woman said, no, it is time. Let her go. I've done everything for this child, but she's ungrateful. And now the mother, the poor mother who is struggling to raise other four children have to take this girl and go with her. And when the girl was taken to her real home where her mom <clears throat> lives, she found out that place was like a dungeon. It's all those kind of places that they use zinc to just beat the zinc, put the nails together to cover the place. Is there's a, all kind of, you know, it's a nasty place. There's gutter, there's everything, you know, mosquitoes, flies and everything. And when she walked into there, she started crying. crying. She said, no, this is not my home. This is not my home. I hope this is a prank. I hope this is a dream. Somebody can walk me. She was crying. One week passed, two weeks, three weeks. She thought maybe the mom was trying to teach her lesson. She was praying hard. Say, mommy, I know you will come back for me. I know you will come back for me and pick me up. Guess what? Before she know, three months, four months, five months, and she really now is now done on her that really this is her home. So she has to now leave, learn to adapt, learn to adapt to that situation. And because of being ungrateful, because she is ungrateful, she lost every good opportunity. And that is how God is looking down on us. He said, I have done this for this person. I have given you life. I have, you asked me for child, I've given you life, child. You have asked me for home, I've given you home. <clears throat> you asked me for a husband, I've given you husband. What do I get? When they say, even now, let's go to church, you will say no. I don't have time for church. My child this, my child that. The same child that you've been begging God, you've been praying for. And that is that same child now that is even taking your time. Not even, no, don't even, let us not even go far about going to church. When last some of us, when last do, do we take 30 minutes and just lay on the floor or went on our knees and said, today, I'm not going to ask God anything. I'm just going to thank him. I'm just going to be grateful. I'm just going to worship God for what he has done for me. When last did any of us did that? All the things that we're doing, our job has taken the place of gratitude in our lives. Our homes has taken the place of gratitude in our lives. We get up and get and go without even having to say, God, thank you for waking me up this morning. God, thank you for this job. Some people think of oh, the money they are making that is paying their, their bills. When other people are working 10 jobs, they cannot even afford to pay their bills. Because of what? So the danger of um, being ungrateful, one, the danger of being ungrateful, what does being ungrateful make to you? You toy and suffer with nothing to show up. It might be working for you now. It might be looking like, oh, everything is in place. But before you know, you start losing things bit by bit. You will not understand how you're losing things. Before you know, your car will spoil. The money that you're supposed to save up and do something with, you now take that money to go and put it and repair your car. That is the danger of being ungrateful. The danger of being ungrateful, being ungrateful can shut doors, can shut doors on you. God will just say, let me see how far you can go. And you will just want to get favor with people. Nothing is working. Being ungrateful can shut a door, every door of opportunity before you. Because it's only the Lord that open doors. He said, today I said before you an open door that no man can shut. When God, 
Whenever you go back and tell God, thank you, God, I'm grateful. It's like you are saying, God, I've seen what you are doing. And I'm grateful for this one. I know you will do more. Whenever you go back to be grateful to God, you go back. There, just like us at the, our scripture, Luke 17 says, God, Jesus Christ says, where are the other nines? And guess what? What happened to the other nines? We never heard about them again. We don't even know what happened to them. You remember when they were saying like, oh, when God do something into you, in your life, and you do not testify, you can lose your miracle. You can lose that thing that God has done. And it's true because we didn't, never knew what happened to them. Maybe that leprosy might have come back. But guess what? That one person that went back to and fell flat, that is gratitude. That's not being thankful. Do you know what? I know that guy is, that leper is great, is great, is grateful, is genuinely grateful from his heart. He fell flat on his face. If he's just thankful, you probably will just say, oh, Jesus, thank you. I am healed. Have a wonderful day. Have a nice day. And just walked. But he came. He fell flat. He fell flat on his face. That alone shows total submission, total surrender. He's saying, God, I surrender. I see what you have done. And you know what Jesus Christ said? He said, go, you are made whole. That means you are made whole. This leprosy will not come back. This leprosy will not affect your generation to come. This leprosy will never come near any of your, your, your descendants. So when God say you are whole, he's not cleaning this man alone, but he's cleaning his children. He's cleaning his children, children. He's cleaning his children, children up to 10 generations. Remember when the Lord said, I will visit the sin of a father up upon him up to his fourth generation. It's dissenting, gratefulness, thanksgiving, gratitude to God can set your family, your generation up to 10 generations. He can set the open door before them. Do you know that some people, because of how good they were, maybe to people, to their bosses, and in the future, even after that father is gone, because of that father has been honest, has been a responsible man, he's been a grateful man to maybe to his boss. One day, his child can finish school and he's looking for a job. And somebody will tell him, hey, this person, your father used to work to that with that person, and I, I, I can remember your father has a good relationship with that person. Go and see what that person. Do you know you, your habit, your attitude towards people, how you treat people, how you are grateful to people can open door for your own child. God said, whatever He does, is abide forever. So the blessing of God upon a great a, a, a man, a grateful man, is abiding forever. And when it abides forever, it reach your children, children. When God cleans that leper, he cleans him, he says, Go, you are made whole. And not just that he's made whole. Do you know being made whole come with a blessing on its own? It comes with a lifting on its own. Where those people used to go and hide behind the, the city where they cannot enter the city. Now this man can boast to enter anywhere that anybody that think they are clean, they're not lepers can enter. Why? Because he's grateful. That God healed him and he made him whole. And he said, go. That means God is giving me, the, Jesus Christ is giving me the authority to enter the palace where the king is living. He's giving me the authority to possess the land where before they were rejected, they were thrown back. They were hidden in the back of the city. That means God is giving him the authority to say, oh, to now, now you too, you can stand and speak what others are speaking. That is what being grateful can make to a man, can bring to a man. It set a door before you that no man can shut. It brings everlasting blessing, blessing that can go from one generation to another. Let me take us to the qualities of a grateful man, the qualities of a grateful man. Qualities of a grateful man. It says, 
these are some things that I wrote down. I see this in scriptures, but I do not write most of the time, like is 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 um when you think about yourself. So, like, what do you see about people that are grateful? They say people that are grateful, they are always thankful in the name of God. They are always thankful in the name of God. Not in the name of what the person did for them, but they are grateful in the, in the, in the name of God, always. Why? Because like now I will say, oh, I thank God for Sister Marian, for bringing Sister Marian into my life. I thank God for bringing Sister Kelly into my life. I thank God for, you, for God using Sister Gladys to be of this blessing to me. Always thankful. You're thankful for that person, but you are thankful in the name of God. Because you, why? You, are, you have the understanding that even them, if God do not empower them to be that blessing to you, if God do not empower them to, to have what they have that they have given to you, they will not do it. So there's an understanding that whatever it is, you are always thankful in the name of God. First, Every time you are always thankful in the name of God. He said, number two, a grateful person. They are sacrificial in the name of God. Sacrificial in the name of God. Because whatever they are doing to somebody, they know that is because God has given it to them. That God has did it to them. God has used somebody else also to give it, to do it to them. Then they are sacrificial. They sacrifice when they sacrifice, they don't do it without no attachment. It's not like I'm trying to also say, it's Sister Marian's birthday. Or if I buy her a gift, when my birthday comes, she to she will buy me a gift and bring. So no, you are not doing that. You are sacrificing in the name of God. Whether the person turn around and tell you thank you, whether that, that person come back and say, oh, I appreciate you, you do it in the name of God because God has given you the ability to have that kind heart and show love to that person. You are sacrificing in the name of God. You are not doing it because you are expecting anything from God. You are not worshiping God because you are expecting, oh, if I worship God, God, I've been praying about this in marriage. God will give me husband. Oh, you will not, you not sacrifice your time to, to, to serve God because you are believing God. Oh, if I, I, I maybe if I do do God, God will quickly give me that child that I'm waiting on. Oh, will give me that home that I'm believing in. No. You are doing it in the name of God with no thing attached to it. And he said, grateful people, a grateful person. Ah, a grateful person is always, a grateful person is family devoted in the things of God throughout his life by faith is devoted, is devoted. Family, not today. You are here, you have one leg in on tomorrow, you are out. No, you are family devoted. A great, whether God do it, you say, God, whether you do it, whether you do not do it, Lord, I am grateful. I am here just to come and tell you I'm grateful for even just the air I am breathing. You are family devoted. Whether you turn around, you start that business, the business crash, you are grateful. You are family devoted. Nothing anybody can say, nothing anybody can do, nothing life can throw at you that will make you say, ah, God. Why do you allow this to happen to me? God, you are sitting there in heaven. You are watching, you know, this is wickedness. You know, there are some people that can call God name. They can call God names. <laughs> May God help us. I just pray God will open our eyes to see that this is just even beyond being grateful. If, if you know that your life, just like the scripture said, that your life does not belong to you. Who are you? Who are you that you are bragging? You will know that, okay, God, nothing in this world will move me. And uh, number, number five, it says, a grateful person, a grateful person have a, uh, have a, have a, a graceful person heart is full with peace. If 
full, it's full with peace. It's full with peace. You see grateful people, they have peace. They are not, have no place for worry. They cannot worry. Why will you worry? When you know in the first place, this thing that you have, how do you start? How do you come about? If they say you should explain how you arrive here, like today, I can only tell you, Lord, I went to the embassy. Yes, I have taken a step, right, to apply for visa. And I've taken a step to leave my house to go to the embassy. But if I should explain how God did it, how God decided to use somebody there to grant me the visa, how even the plane that I enter flew me down to this country, how can I explain it? How, why will, where will you start to, to, to explain it? That when the plane is in the, in the, in the sky, and, and do you know all the craziness and the evil things that is happening around? How can you? But when you are grateful, you have that peace, you have that assurance that God that did it before will do it again. That God that brought me to this place will still continue with me. He will not abandon me. No matter what you see, you have that peace around you. Even when people, everybody is in chaos, everybody is worried. Yeah, I need to gather this money so I can do this. You, but you are not worried because you know when God showed up, everything would just fall in place. They don't struggle. Grateful people don't struggle because they see the future before even they get into the future. Because they why they have the assurance, they've seen what God has done and they are grateful for it. They are telling God, thank you. It's just like a father. No father like an ungrateful child. You cannot buy, uh, your child is going to college and say, let me buy him this car and you buy the car, the guy, the boy will take it. And the boy will look at it and say, dad, my friend's father bought him a, 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 a Mustang. You know, those cars that young people will be driving and they'll be speeding with. Bought him at most than 2021. And dad, you went and bought me Toyota Camry 2015. Ha! The father will look, will say, okay, so this one, how do you expect your father next time, even when he become, even if he win a jackpot to buy you a Mustang, when he bought you 2015, sometimes God will try you with the little to see how grateful you will be. He said to whom is grateful with the little more will be given unto him. Then you will now look at it and say, the father will pack the car, will collect the car and go and return it and collect his money. And then every day you will be calling your friend, that person that have a Mustang to come and give you a ride. And is, that person will not be there every day. They say, they say uh, my people will say, uh, and, and, and there's a proverb people will use, they say, say a, 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 dead, a dead dog, a, dead, a, a living dog is better than a dead dog or whatever. A, 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 so like, you know, at least living you are not calling. better than a dead lion. A, a, a living dog is better than a dead lion. At least, you know, you are not calling anybody to say now, okay, you want to go somewhere. Then you will not call that your friend that have Mustang. Let's say that, that your friend that have Mustang is living in Yukon. Then you now get ready. You go stand in front of your compound <clears throat> and be waiting for Mustang. And by the time the Mustang go, he will just branch his own place, come back. By the time you come back, where you are going? Or maybe let's say you have a job interview. Your father bought you Toyota come in 2050. Wait for just enter. Even the car is not moving very well. At least they say, I say slow and steady, you will get there. You will now wait for Mustang. By the time you come, they don't finish interview, you will lose that job. It's that time your eyes will clear. See what ungratefulness can cause people. People can lose things that they, that they, should, they, they should have possessed cheaply. So this is just a human being. We are just making an example for with, with a human being. And also, also an ungrateful person. And a grateful person, okay, is full with peace because they, they, they know that God is faithful. He that did it before will do it again. And they say ungrateful person is a blessed person and is a blessing to others. Un a grateful person is a blessed person and is a blessing to others. So whenever you are grateful, you are telling God, God, I am blessed. I am blessed. 
and I will be a blessing to others. Because when people come around you, they don't even understand what you are thankful of, what you are grateful of, but you are happy. And even when you do not have, you will take out of the little you have and be a blessing to other people. Tell me how people will not keep coming to you. A grateful person to draw people, draw people, draw people. They draw people. They are builders. They are not people that tear people down. They are builders. They encourage grateful people. They encourage they encourages people around them. Even when things are bad around them, they make everyone around them feel everything is okay and everything is going to be okay. That's what grateful people do. That's what grateful people do. Now, after that, I want you to rate yourself to see where do you fall? Do you fall in the list of grateful person? Do you, can you say, if today somebody was to ask you, can you say, oh, I'm always grateful to God? Always. Not like, you know, by getting our say, ah, thank you, Lord. And you just go. Because people think like it's, it, being grateful is just about telling God, thank you, oh God, thank you. You get up, you, you, you stretch, you say, ah, oh, Father, thank you today for life. Thank you for the fresh air. It's good to acknowledge that, you know, God has given you that breath. God has given you that life, the life that you are, you are well able to go to sleep and wake up is good. But are you being appreciation, appreciation of God? Have you been appreciative of God? English, have you been appreciative of God? Down in your heart, when you look at your life, do you, do you see? the hand of God, do you see a grateful person? Or do you still, do you still regret like, oh, had been if my nose is straight, <laughs> maybe I would have looked finer than this. Or maybe had been, you know, I have long hair and I'm light skin, I'm fair in complexion. I would have been more better and maybe people who may have liked me better. Are you that kind of person that you look at your life? You, you, find, you find every, every fault with everything that is in your life. Do not to even go far. Just you look, you look at, you stand in front of mirror. If you stand in front of mirror, do you look at yourself? You say, ah, oh God, I thank you because you created me beautiful. Look at me. Do you see yourself in the image of God? Or do you look at yourself and say, oh, today have, had been a, this, 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 it could have been better, this, 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 if this thing go like this and go like that. Let me also, let's go into the qualities of ungrateful person. The quality of ungrateful person. And I have a scripture for this. This is what a scripture says about People that are ungrateful. What in the last day, what people will turn out to be? First Timothy, no, uh, Second Timothy. Second Timothy three, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Second Timothy three, verse one to five, it says, but now, this diff now, but no, this difficult time will come in the last day. For people will be, be well, will, for people will be lovers of self. One, lovers of money. Two, boastful. Three, proud. Four, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, ungrateful ungrateful that is the word ungrateful and unholy unloving iris in irreconcilable slanderous without self-control brutal without love for what is good brutal without love for what is good traitors that's what god is calling people that is, are ungrateful traitors traitors, reckless, 
cons conceited lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And he went ahead and said in verse five, holding to the form of ungodliness, but denying the power. Avoid these people, avoid these people. My people, my women, God is telling us to avoid. You and you have an ungrateful person around you, avoid them. Because those people will make you, will suck up the air, will make you not to see anything good in anybody or anything good in what God is doing. This is what the Bible says. People will become evil. So what does the Bible is telling us for ungrateful people? That is telling you that ungrateful people, they are traitors. They are lovers of themselves. Self-centered, self-centered. <laughs> proud. It says proud. And proud people, you can, they can easily, easily mess up someone's life. Proud people ungrateful people then somebody would like okay and just like i was saying like okay somebody gave you a gift even if that gift costs one dollar and you, you some people will look at it you look at it you say can you imagine look at what this person gave to me and you when you see the person you will say well thank you sha thank you sha for that thing that you have you giving me like thank you sha that is, that, is, that is why we're saying the difference between thanksgiving and, great, uh, and gratitude is the gratitude come from heart. A grateful person, whether that thing is $1, when you see that person, you say, oh, my sister, thank you so much. I appreciate what you have given to me. Ah, you know, you, you, you will see they are genuine. They are genuine, they are genuine. Grateful people, they are genuine. When they say even thank you, when they say it in a casual way, you will see the genuineness of that. That's what the Bible says. Ungrateful people, they are proud. And another quality of ungrateful person, they are arrogant. And the Bible's God told us that he hates arrogant people and proud people. He said, when you are proud, and arrogant, he will humble you. God himself will humble you. So even God does not have place for arrogant and proud people. What does he do with them? He throw them away. He throw them away. Like every day you come, you don't even take time to tell God, let me just worship and thank God. Let me uh, thank God first before you start. You just come, God, you know, I need this, I need that, I need that. No, God is not our accountant. He's not our bank accountant. God is not our errand boy. Even people that are around us should not, should not be our errand boy. We should not be calling people whenever, only when we need somebody. Like some people, okay, you have kids and you know there's somebody that can always help you to go pick up your child. But after they pick up your child, they drop the child. You never even take time to call them and say thank you or anything until you need them to come through for you again or to go because you know they are, they are your child and their child go to the same school. So you always be taking that advantage. Oh, are you going to go pick up your son today? Can you carry my son, please? And they carry the son, bring them. But you for one day, you have never made up time to say, okay, madam, call that person and say, madam, today, don't go. I will pick up your son. I'll bring you at least return the hand of good gesture kindness and he said ungrateful people they are abusive they are abusive they abuse every opportunity and just like i said every day you'll be calling this woman ah mother you they go school and hey, can you pick up my child but you have you misuse the the privilege of that woman's child being in the same school with your child they are abusive Ungrateful people, they are disobedient. Because no person that is obedient to God and to authority, even to friends, there is loyalty. There's a place for loyalty, even in friendship. We owe people that time to just say thank you, just to call that person. 
you don't deserve it. No, be you even give the, even if that thing costs one dollar, did you put one dollar in the pocket of that person? No, we did not. But the fact that they thought about, you know, moving that one dollar to just go and, and say, yes, take this. And say, ungrateful people, they are self-centered. Everything is about them. Everything is about them. They don't think about anybody but themselves. Me, I, and me. Me, I, and myself. Me, I, and myself. Me, I, and myself. Whenever you talk to somebody, anybody that anytime you talk to them, you see them. Everything is about me. I, I want this. I want this. I want this. I do this. I do. run away from those people. Run away. There's no place by the grace of God, I want to do this. By the grace of God, I will get there. They, 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 they think that their the life belongs to them. No place for acknowledgement of gratitude to God or to the people around them. Ungrateful people, they are reckless, unhappy. They are lovers of money. Lovers of material things. There are some people, their friendship is only based on material things. Based on material things. They can never, never, never. Hello, can you people hear me? Call came in. So, so they are, they are, their, their, their friendship is based on material things. If they are you, they're not getting anything from you. And let me just use how you know ungrateful people. I personally, when uh, before, I'm that kind of person that will open my eyes to people, more especially students, because when I first came here as a, as a student, I needed a place to stay. God used somebody, you know, to give me a place. I stayed with this mama for three years. I've never paid dime. But what do I do to show an appreciation? Because I know I cannot pay her. I'll make sure the house of that woman was clean. I wash her dishes. I cook for her because regardless, she's a mother. Even if I'm paying rent, at least that's the least I can do for respect, you know? I make sure I take out her trash. You know, even after I left the house, this woman does not want me to leave. She told me, she said, stay, make sure you finish your school, save your money and go back to school and finish school. But I said, no, mama, it is time. You know, when you know it is time, you don't want to be overstay your welcome. Then somebody will now come and say, ah, you know, today, now tell you to go. So when I move, even after I move, do you know, I'll still come to that woman's house. I know her, where she put her trash. I'll come and remove the trash and put it on the roadside. I know the day that the trash people always come to carry her trash. I would just come and carry the trash and put it by the side of the road and go. Every morning when I'm coming back from work, I used to work night shift. I would pass there, remove their trash. That is just for me to say what you have done for me, I cannot forget. It to today, I cannot forget. And that really pushed me to be able to help other people. But do you know when you have helped an ungrateful person, instead of that person to be grateful, they will turn around and lie about you. A person that I brought, a woman that was pregnant, have no place to go. I pay her ticket, I brought her. This woman, I went, go to all places. We were able to find and uh, do Medicaid or something for free. And I don't know why the Holy Spirit put it in my heart to it, put it in my, sorry, we have, we have time. I'm, I'll be rounding up. We were out of time. I'll be rounding up. God put it in my heart. I don't know this person. I only met her through somebody. But I started praying. Anytime I pray, I have this burden to help her. And after I brought her, I moved her from Austin. I brought her here. And after everything, you know, I gave her a room. I have two bedroom. So she lives with me. And I was just like, I suspected because that's what my spirit keeps telling me. If this woman's pregnancy gets complicated, she have she can't drive. She doesn't, she doesn't walk. And the person that pregnated her is still back in Nigeria. So she have nobody that can help her. So that's what my thought was. And as God will have it, I listened to the spirit of God. After she moved into my place, the pregnancy become complicated. One day we went to check up, they said there's no placenta fluid. They have to keep her in the hospital. Do you know, to the extent now, doctors put her 
on four days, three days checkup every week. Every other day I have to take her to hospital. Every other day I have to take her to hospital. So the pregnancy becomes so complicated. I did everything. I took this woman, I used to go to CAC and I took her to pastor. Pastor said, take her to my wife. They did a very huge baby shower for this woman. Everybody will be calling me, what is your sister having? What is your sister having? Uh, if we see the things that people bought for her because of what? Because of God. I would say because of God, but because she, she connected to me, she knows me, right? And I know these people have been going to this church for, for a while. And guess what? After some time, this woman changed after she had the baby. The woman, I came back from work one day. I was about to open my door and I met her. She was talking about me to somebody on the phone. Using, rubbing my name, rubbishing my name. Saying all kind of things. I stood there. I don't know if I should cry or if I should scream. But I thank God for the spirit of God. After I opened this door, I did not wait. I did not pretend like I did not hear her. I said, I'm so sorry, Angela, that I would think I've opened my door to you as a sister. This is what I can get. And I said it right there, but I kept quiet. And, that's, and I become so cold towards her. Even though I don't like it, I become so cold. To the extent I now came and told her, I said, please, once your child turn two months, yeah, maybe the child have this last end, baby short, baby short, you need to come and go. After that, I'd say this with all humility and in niceness, I told her, I said, I'm not gonna throw you out, but once your child is strong, I, I have done all I can. God has, you know, has used me to help you to where I can now. So this woman, before I know, I started hearing stories. People in Nigeria are calling me, oh, what did you do to this woman? This is everybody was saying so. So those are the kind of people we sometimes we deal with. We have people not because you know they deserve it, but because God has empowered us to. That is ungrateful. That I say ungrateful people, they are wicked. They are slanderous. They can go and go say all kind of things so they will look good and you will look bad. And that is the kind of person I helped. So this is just, you know, I'm not saying that we should not help people, but we should do it by the spirit of God. I remember a lady told me, I know you love to help people, but always ask the Holy Spirit, pray about you, for God to show you who you will open your eyes to. So, and after I move out of that place, God knows I took time to pray. Took time to pray. To make sure before anybody will enter my house, the Holy Spirit must have let them in. And in conclusion, in conclusion, this is what Isaiah 5, 20, 21 says. And this is in, in, in regard to ungrateful people. He said, what to those who call, what to those who call good, who call evil, good, good, evil, who put, um, who put darkness for light, and light for darkness, who puts bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. It's a war to those who are wise in their own eyes. War to them who are wise in their own eyes and clean in their own sight. He said war to them. And also Psalm 9 verse 1 say, I will give no, 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 sorry, 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 no, no, Sam, okay, no, Sam, I have a scripture that, yeah, a hunt, Titus, Titus 1, 15, say, I say, he say, to the poor, all things are pure, but to, to, to those who are corrupted, and to those who are corrupted and, and do not believe, nothing is pure, because they are because they, they are mine, because they are mine and conscious are corrupted. He says, he said, to the pure, all things are pure. And he said, only the evil man can see good and call it evil. So when you are an ungrateful person, that means you are seeing good, all the good that God has done for you and you are calling it evil. All the good that is coming out of people and you are calling it evil. That's what the Bible is saying. And I hope when we search ourselves in our quiet time, when we search ourselves, we'll, we'll be able to, to have a reason to be grateful to God. 
Not because, you know, we deserve it, but because he is God. And we are not evil people because he says only evil people will see good and call it evil. To the pure, all things are pure. To the evil, all things are evil. They don't see anything good. So I pray that God will open our hearts to be able to be grateful in every situation and everything. I hope by this message, we will be able to go back and activate the attitude and habit of being grateful, grateful to God, not just being say, God, thank you, but set a time aside, apart, set a time aside to always go, lay down on the floor of whatever you have to do and be grateful from your heart. And only then, only then, until you are genuinely grateful to God, only then, doors will not open for you. Your generation to come will not have that access to that great door. So, that means for this, just to summarize everything, that greatness is attached to being grateful. Grateful people are great people. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Sorry, I'm taking our time. Thank you very much, Sister Diane, for that powerful message. And that powerful message, of course, will inspire our intercessory prayers. We want to be thankful to God for all of the things that he has done in as much as we are in whatever situation that we are at any point in time. We want to still be thankful to God. And so we're going to be thankful to God for all the things that he has done, he is doing, and is to do in all of our intercessory prayers today. Uh, Luke chapter 16, verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. I want us to be thankful to God for our nation this morning because in as much as we're in various <coughs> nations, we're in various places, we're in, in the US, in, Cam in Cameroon, Nigeria, the Europe, wherever you are, whether you're on Zoom here or later watching this, whatever nation you are in, we know there are some places that they are going through wars, civil wars and difficulties. And we keep praying for, 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 for God's uh, uh, saving grace every day. But we should not forget that we also have to be thankful for the little good things that he does every day. So that's what we are doing today. We want to thank God for our leaders who have done the best that they have done so far to maintain peace to the level to which it is at this point and then we want to thank god for the fact that we are not in those nations that are at this point in time that are uh, in trouble we want to thank god for our family members who are in those nations or people who know friends or yourself in place who are in those places but they are saved they are not dead they are not uh, uh, they are not dead. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us pray this morning. Lord, we thank you for our nations. We thank you because you have instilled leaders, wisdom upon our leaders, oh Lord, that they are able to lead the nation and bring, and, and bring peace in the nation. That we thank you because there are no wars in our nations, in some nations anyway. That we thank you, oh Father, for the nations that are wars, that you are saving your children. That we thank you, oh Father, for our family members whom you are protecting every day from civil wars from the evil eye from every demonic spirit that in, in, in this in these warring nations in the name of jesus christ that we are thankful for these little things that you do for us every day in our nations and we still hope because we know that we, are, we know that with you everything is possible we say father thank you we are grateful we, pray, we thank you because you will continue to do these things for us we thank you because you said in your word that you give us the grace to go through it. Even if you have not stopped the wars, oh Father, that we know, oh Father, that you have given us the grace to go through these difficult times, oh Lord. That in your mighty name we say thank you, Lord, because your grace is sufficient for us. Your grace is sufficient for our families. Your grace is sufficient for the warring nations. Oh Lord, that if we thank you because you have given us saving men over your children. You are not letting 
reason that them will to steal the lives of your children. I think those who have passed away that we say thank you because we know, Father, that because you are gracious upon them, you have received them into your holy kingdom. Thank you, Father, for the nation that are peace. Thank you for instilling peace and continuing peace. Thank you for the wisdom upon our leaders. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that is in, in the, 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 the authorities, among the authorities who are leading our nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you are marvelous. Amen. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 says, uh, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We want to pray for our expectant mothers, thanking God that for this promise He has over our lives. We want to thank God this morning. Every aspect of what my mother is thanking God this morning that he has destined us for an expected end. He has destined us for an establishment. He has destined us to have kids that will grow in his grace. And so we are being thankful. We're saying thank you for the present and we're saying thank you for the future. For us to be able to have these kids as Christian women of God is because we are God has given us good homes. It's because God has given us the perfect husbands. It's because God has blessed us to a certain level. And we know that he has already told us we have an expected end, which means all we have to do is just glorify his name and be thankful to him in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we say thank you thank you because you have promised us oh lord that we have an expected end in you that you thank you because you have promised us the gift of the fruit of the womb and you said oh lord that we, we we are to be productive we are to be fruitful and you created our wombs to be fruitful and so we know oh lord by your mighty right hand that our wombs are fruitful so daddy we say thank you this morning we thank you in advance for the blessing that you are doing in our lives thank you oh lord Lord, for the beautiful gracious children that you have blessed us with uh, bless us with in the name of Jesus Christ and so in this moment while awaiting the manifestation of your blessings and promises in our lives oh father that we continue to seek you we continue to praise you we continue to acknowledge you we continue to give glory to you we continue to thank you father because you say when we seek you we will find you oh Lord Jesus that we thank you because we have found you we have found your word and we believe in your word and by your word, oh Father, there is manifestation because you always keep your word. And we say thank you for keeping your word in our lives. Thank you for keeping your word in our lives, oh Father. Every expectant mother, oh Father, that did we say thank you. Thank you for the gift of the fruit of the womb. Thank you, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Makalushe ketebo santa baliga rababa abarashe ketetetete. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me, you will with all of your heart. What he says that um uh I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you all the nations. I will gather from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. I want us to pray for every single woman out there in the name of Jesus Christ, thankfully, wanting to thank God because in as much as he has promised us an expected end, he also is working something in us during that waiting period. Let us thank God, every single woman, let us thank God for that work that he's doing in our lives. Whatever waiting period that we are going through, that during that period, God is forming something for us. He is perfecting us because for us to get to that, his expected end, he is polishing us, making us good mothers, making us perfect wives, making us a good thing and we are not just thanking God for ourselves that he is working on we are thanking God also for the husbands that he is working on in the name of Jesus Father Daddy we say thank you thank you oh Lord Father because you have established us you, have us. you said two is better than one which means you have a person a, 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 a blessed a blessed child of God whom you have prepared for each and every single woman out there in the name of Jesus Christ Daddy we say thank you because you are 
perfect in each and every one of us, oh Father, in our being, in our character, in our spirits, in our in our ministries, in our careers, in everything that is us. That that Adam, Adam, that is my, that is one woman in the name of Jesus Christ. That we say thank you for all that you are working in us. Thank you for your patience with us, oh Father. In the times in which we prove to be stubborn, that we say thank you because you have been patient with us. You keep working in us. That we say thank you for the husbands that you have destined for us. Thank you, oh Father, for that which you are working. In. Thank you, oh Father, because you are prospering them. Thank you, oh Lord, because you are aligning their hearts with us. Thank you, oh Father, because you are working the gift of the spirit and the fruits of the spirit in them in the name of jesus thank you oh father because you are perfecting them you are making them christ like in the name of jesus thank you father because you are building your holy spirit within them and us in the name of jesus christ thank you oh father because you have established our homes already thank you oh lord because the union is from you oh lord not by from us in the name of jesus christ father we thank you because you are teaching us your way you are making our way straight oh Father, you are clearing us from our Christ so what? And you are making us Christ like you are making us perfect for you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, oh Lord, for every single woman in which you are you are blessing in your own way. In Jesus, precious name, we pray. Amen. And amen. Today we're going to go close to our normal daily scripture. We're reading 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, which says, Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom mark 10 27 says with people it is impossible but impossible but not with god for all things are possible with god in our homes today we want to pray and thank god that he is the god who does impossible things and he has promised us that he's going to do impossible things in our lives in as much as we seek him and when we seek him we will he will find us because in him there is freedom there is liberty and so we want to thank god for the spirit of god that he's instilling in our hearts in our in our families in our homes and declare and, and the fact that he's bringing uh, uh, liberty from the the oppressors in our homes because the devil is always wanting to skew to steal to destroy but the gratitude that is within us, the praise that is within us, the fire of God that is within us, as long as we keep thanking God, we're being grateful to God, we are humble, we humble ourselves before God, God is giving us liberty from the evil one in the name of Jesus Christ, that we say thank you for the liberty that you're giving us in our homes, thank you oh Lord for instilling joy in our homes, thank you oh Lord for instilling peace in our homes, so that we say Say thank you because you are faithful to us, even in moments when we are not holding on to you, oh Lord Jesus Christ. That you hold on to us in the name of Jesus Christ. And for me and my household, oh Lord, we will serve you because with you there is the spirit, with you there is light, with you there is understanding, with you there is peace, with you there is joy, oh Lord. That with you there is freedom. That in the name of Jesus we say thank you. Thank you, oh Father. Thank you, oh Lord, for receiving our word, receiving our prayers, receiving our hearts. Thank you, oh Lord, for the work that you are doing in our lives, in our homes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for blocking off every hole in which the devil is trying to destroy our homes. Thank you, oh Father, for, 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 for cleansing our hearts from every impurity that seems to be the cause of the destruction of our homes. Thank you, oh Lord, for that which you are working in our lives, in the lives of our husbands, in the lives of our children, to make our homes perfect in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for filling us with your Holy Spirit, O Lord. Thank you for filling us with your liberty. Thank you, O Lord, for liberating us from the strongholds. Thank you, O Lord, for liberating us from every curse. Thank you, O Father, for that work that you have perfected in our lives. Thank you, O Lord, for the little things that you are doing every day in our lives, in our homes, in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, everlasting Father. Daddy, may your name be praised and glorified. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. And now we're going to read our song, Psalm 20.
In times of trouble, may the Lord answer our cry. May the name of the God of Jacob keep us safe from all harm. Amen. 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 May he send us help from his sanctuary and strengthen us from Jerusalem. Amen. 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 May he remember all of our, our gifts and look favorably on our burnt offerings. Amen. 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 May he grant our hearts desires and make all of our plans succeed. Amen. Amen. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God. Amen. Amen. May the Lord answer all of our prayers. Amen. Amen. Now we know that the Lord rescues his anointed children, CTW. He will answer us from his holy heaven and rescue us from rescue us by his great power. Amen. 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 Some nations boast of their chariots and horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. Amen. 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 Those nations will fall down and collapse, but we will rise up and stand firm. TTW will rise up and stand firm in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We give glory to our King, O oh Lord, answer our cry for help. Amen. 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 And amen. And amen. Normally, I always end by you know praying, which I will do. But I just I just want to say thank you, Sister Diane. Thank you for this amazing message of today. You know, I am so happy because TTW is really raising women that are going to be overtakers, you know, in our generation. And I'm grateful. Thank you for the amazing word. Always when we hear the word thanksgiving, most often sometimes, oh, gratitude, you talked about gratitude. And one thing you said, there's a difference between gratitude and thanksgiving. And I've taken it, I've taken it. It was, it was powerful. I was blessed. It's, it's, a, it's a common topic, but every time the Holy Spirit sends somebody, there's always something significant that he wants each and every one to. And that was my own takeaway, apart from every, you know, every other thing you said, the difference between gratitude and thanksgiving. God bless you and continue to use you more and more in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So let's just pray. Father, we want to thank you. We appreciate you for today. We thank you for this amazing privilege. Thank you, especially for me, how blessed I was today by watching my sister sharing the word. Lord, we are grateful. Grateful. We are grateful for that which you have talked to us individually, for that which have touched us. We are grateful for the Holy Spirit and his presence in our midst. Lord, we say thank you. The scripture says you are our son and our shield, and you're the one that bestows favor upon us. Lord, we ask, so oh God, concerning this week, your favor will be with us. That even as we live this life program, Lord, we are not going to depart away from your presence. That as we keep on coming here, Lord, there should be a reason for a transfer transformation that the word of god is going to make us the word of god is going to mold us and the word of god is going to use and transform us that lord your word will make us the light of this world and the salt of this earth father we thank you for another amazing privilege every time your word is sent for the bible says it cannot return without fulfilling the purpose for which it was sent we thank you because we are so confident that the word of today is going to fulfill its purpose and its agenda lord we thank you for the privilege of salvation we thank you for this opportunity you have given to us lord we give you all the glory and for those of us who have been here oh god on this platform we pray for your blessing the bible says that what it says that the righteous shall flourish that lord this week we are going to see amazing reasons why we should continually praise your name that this week is going to be the best we have ever experienced in 2021 we thank you because we know doors are about to open for us we thank you because we are going to move in endless opportunities and we decree together as a family that so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for your preservation upon our lives and our loved ones and that till we meet again next week Monday, nothing shall be broken and nothing shall be missing in our midst in Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Let's share the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Facebook family, for joining us. Have a beautiful and a wonderful week. God bless you. Bye.